All right, so let's take a look at um, section 6.3. Okay, so 6.2 gave us a bunch of theorems if you knew a shape was a parallelogram. 6.3, we're going to switch that. I'm going to give you a shape, and I'm going to ask you to prove it's a parallelogram. Okay, I'm going to give you four, uh, maybe even five different ways to, not, uh, to prove something's a parallelogram. Okay? So anybody have a guess how we're going to do that? Think about, we're going to use some theorems. Which theorems do you think we're going to use? They're actually stuff we kind of did already, but we're going to just do something to it we've done before to these theorems. We're going to look at the converses of all the theorems we had yesterday. So instead of saying, if a figure is a parallelogram, then opposite angles are congruent, write the converse. If opposite angles are congruent and it's a quadrilateral, then the figure is a parallelogram. Okay, so if you want to write down, there are a lot of theorems. It's all the ones we had yesterday. You can write them all. Or you can just say, see all the converses of the four theorems we had yesterday. It's up to you. Okay, but these are all on page 338. So if you have a, a shape and both pairs of the opposite sides are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We're assuming here we're talking about quadrilaterals. Okay. So if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then you have a parallelogram. Okay, here's another theorem, converse of the next one we had from yesterday. If both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, so if the opposite angles are congruent, the ones that are on a diagonal, then your shape is a parallelogram. You don't have to memorize the theorem number. Okay, in fact, on a test, I'd want you to just abbreviate it, um, but you don't have to write theorem 6.7. 6.8. It says, if an angle in a quadrilateral is supplementary to both of the consecutive angles, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, we talked about that. The, con the converse of that yesterday. And our other theorem we can use to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram is if the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, if you can prove that the diagonals bisect each other, then you've proven it's a parallelogram. Now, if we wanted to prove something's a square or a rhombus or a rectangle, these theorems wouldn't really help us. They're not specific enough. Because if I prove that the diagonals bisect each other, that could be a rectangle, could be a rhombus, could be a square. Okay? To prove something's a square, that's a little harder. You've got to prove more stuff. Okay? You've got to prove all the sides are congruent. Or you've got to prove you've got some right angles. Okay? But we're not, we're not getting that specific yet. We're just proving that shapes are parallelograms. It, here's one other theorem. Okay, this, I don't know if we had this one yesterday. This one says, another way to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram is to show that you have a pair of opposite sides that are parallel and congruent. Okay, so something like this. If you could show that those sides are congruent and you could show that they're parallel at the same time, that's enough to prove that you have a parallelogram. Okay, some of these theorems will, will prove. Okay, maybe one or two of them I'll, I'll leave for, for you to try in the homework, but uh, we'll start out with one of the first ones we have, see if we can prove it. What do you think these proofs are going to involve? What, what do most of the proofs we've done end up involving some, somehow? Theorems. Theorems? But what about in terms of like uh, shapes? 
Most of our proofs involve what kind of shape? Triangles. triangles. Okay, so somehow you're going to have to create triangles by drawing in a diagonal. That's how most of these proofs are going to work. Okay. Does everybody have those five, was it five different ways? Yeah. Okay, so depending on the information that you're given, you're going to have to decide which way works the best. All right, so here's a proof of theorem 6.6. Okay, in this shape, you're not given that it's a parallelogram. All you're given is that AD and CD are congruent. And you're also given that AD and CB are congruent. With two pairs of congruent sides. I want to know how that's going to prove we have a parallelogram. What do you think the first thing we're going to need to do here is? And I kind of, I already mentioned it earlier with these kind of proofs. Even before you state a given, something I'm going to have to do to make this proof work. Draw that diagonal that makes triangles. Yeah, I'm going to need a diagonal. It really doesn't matter which diagonal you draw. Um, I'm going to draw the one from C to A. Now, yesterday we stated that as a formal reason. We draw in diagonal CA reason between any two points. There exists one line or second. Um, you don't have to state it as a formal, a formal reason. But we've done that. Now let's start with our proof. So statement one. Okay, what do we always start a proof with? A given. Okay, let's write down what was given. A, B, and C, D are congruent. And at the same time, let's put the other given in there. If you want to do it in two steps, you can, but I think it's easier this way. So a, D is congruent to C, B. Reason given. Okay. So our goal here is going to be to try to prove we have congruent triangles. Well, I can just about do that. Anybody see what one more thing I'd have to say? There's only one thing I've got to say, and then I can prove these two triangles are congruent. And it has to do with something we just drew in. Marquise? C-A is congruent to C-A. Yeah, exactly. C-A or A-C. What's the reason for that? Transitive? Uh, no, not the transitive. It's oh, one of the reasons that we talk about with that one. Reflexive. Yeah, reflexive. Yep. Good. Okay, that's the reflexive property. Great, now we can say our triangles are congruent. I'm going to say triangle ABC. Okay, the first triangle I can name the uh, vertices in any order. Now we got to be careful how we name the second triangle. If I used ABC, how would I name the vertices for the triangle below it? You get stuck. Look at A is the first letter. That's where the side where three and one meet. Look at the side where three and one meet. Okay. And we have to name them in that order. Ian? CDA. Yep, CDA. So the next letter we had was B. That's where two and one meet. Look where two and one meet. The next letter should be D. Okay. So that's, that's how I try to figure out which one goes where. Why are those triangles congruent? What's the, uh, what's the reason? Yeah, that's side, side, side. OK, so that's generally the hardest part. Now we've got congruent triangles. Okay, What could I say now that I have congruent triangles that would help me? 
Remember what, what you're trying to do. You're trying to prove that it's a parallelogram. Okay, to do that, we've got to use the, basically uh, the definition. The definition means you have parallel sides. So somehow I've got to make the jump from having congruent triangles to proving sides parallel. So we've got to talk about something in there. Yep? And if we prove the, the A, that we have supplementary angles, well, that's another theorem. We haven't proven that yet. We haven't proven that if the uh, consecutive angles are supplementary, that's a parallelogram. But it is something with the angles. But the, I was trying to prove that the angles, if they're opposites and they add up to 180, they're parallel. If they're consecutive, not, not opposite ones. If you have consecutive angles and they add up to 180, that, that is a theorem. But we're trying to prove this one using the definition. All right, we're going to try, try to do that. But if you could, you could do that. But we don't have any numbers in here, so that's going to be really hard to do. If we had some numbers, then maybe I'd think about using that 180. But we don't have any numbers. So anybody see anything else I can say about angles? Yeah? Angle D and angle B are the same. Yeah, they are the same. Angle D is congruent to angle B. What's the reason for that? C, 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 C. Yeah, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. D is where one and two meet, B is where one and two meet. Right. So those are, those are congruent. Now, I think I can also say something else under statement four that's going to help me. Because that, let's see. Um, well, is actually, is that help going to help me? It's true, but I'm just, is that going to help me to prove that I have parallel lines? I want to think about the angles that are formed by that diagonal. Okay, that's, that's what's really going to help me. Um, so the reason, I'm, I'm still going to keep the same reason, but instead of looking at those angles, let's look at other ones. Yeah? CA is the uh, angle bisector. Um, we don't know if it actually cuts these angles exactly in half. I don't think it does. Well, what's, can anyone name another pair of angles in those triangles that are congruent besides D and B? I think you're going to need three letters to name it. Yeah? D, C, A. Angle D, C, A. Okay, let's write that one. B, A, C. All right, so D, C, A. And then which one? B, A, C. Yeah. Okay, let's mark that. Um, DCA, and what was the other one you said? BAC, BAC, good. Now look what happens here. You've got two lines cut by a transversal. These are alternate interior angles and they're congruent. Okay, so we're gonna talk about that in the next, in the next step. Did everyone see that? Two lines, think of it like this. Line, line, transversal. Alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, and let's say the same thing, except let's use angle um, D A yeah D A C. Let's see uh, D A C and B C A. Yep. And its corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now, let's mark that. Now we can look at it this way. You have a line, another line, transversal. The alternate interior angles there are also congruent. Okay. So what that means is, oops, we have we've got parallel lines. Okay. We'll just see if we can remember the name, the reason for that. 
So now I'm going to say um, DC and AB are parallel. And what's the other one? DC, AB, CD, and DA are also parallel. Now this is the tricky part. Does anyone remember the reason for that? It has to do with alternate interior angles, but you've got to be careful how you say it. The alternate interior angle converse there. Yes, it's the converse. When your proving lines are parallel, that's the converse. In fact, if you just want to write um, alternate interior angles converse, you don't have to write the theorem, but that's, that's great. Good. And now you've proven you have opposite sides parallel. That's the definition of a parallelogram. Okay, so ABCD is a parallelogram. Reason, definition of a parallelogram. Now that we've proven this theorem, you could use this theorem to prove other theorems. So as we're going through some of these proofs, okay, if you can somehow prove that opposite sides are congruent, we can use that theorem now. We, we just proved it. Okay. okay, any question on that theorem? So I, I think that the proofs can get a little tough because you've got to remember things that kind of go way back, like reason five. That was couple chapters ago. Okay, let's try the one where we have opposite angles congruent. Now it's going to be tough because we don't know anything about the sides right away. Okay, so we can't, we can't directly use the theorem that we just proved. Okay, so I'm going to try to help you with this one because this one's a little tricky. Even though it doesn't, it doesn't look any more complicated, but let's try to go through it. I don't think in this one we're going to need to draw our diagonal. Okay, you might, might be able to, but the problem is if you draw our diagonal, we don't know that AC is an angle bisector, so I don't know anything about angle DAC. I know nothing about that little part of it. Okay. So it'd be, it'd be hard to prove congruent triangles. You could prove the same way, though. You do the transversal and then alternate interior angles. Yeah, but we don't, we don't know anything about because we don't know that these sides are parallel. So if you don't know that they're parallel, we can't use that theorem that we have congruent angles. Does that make sense? All right, so let's start out with another fact that we know about a quadrilateral. What do you know about all those angles? We at least know something about all of them if you add them up. Yeah, they add up to 360. Okay, so let's, um, let's start with that. Angle A plus angle B, angle C plus angle D. It adds up to 360. What's the reason? Uh, that's the definition of the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral. It's not just in a parallelogram, any quadrilateral. Got that. What else do I know? Maybe we should we should state what's given. We could have done what's given right away, but let's at least state what, what's given in that picture right now. Yeah, Ian? Angle A and angle C are congruent. Yeah, angle A and angle C are congruent. And then angle D and angle B are congruent. Angle D. And angle B are congruent. Okay, the reason that's given. Okay. 
Now, anybody see something I can do? I want to kind of take statement one and I want to rewrite it. So I still want to have an equation that equals 360. But using some of what I have in statement two, I can rewrite statement one. For example, what about angle C in statement one? What could I do with that? I could change it to something. What could I change angle C to in statement one? Yeah? Angle A. Yeah. I could replace what I just circled with angle A. Why? Look at statement two. Angle C and A are the same. How about, um, let's look at angle D. What could I replace angle D with? I could change angle D to angle B. Okay, so let's let's make that change. So we're gonna have angle A plus angle B. That stays the same. Now angle C, change it to angle A. And angle D, we're gonna change that to angle B. So I'm trying to get rid of having to work with all four angles at the same time. Now I have the same statement, but I'm only working with two angles, A and B. Okay, that's a little, a little simpler. What did I just do there? I, I didn't just change things. The, the real word is what? Substitution. Yeah, substitution. Now look at what you've got. Angle A plus angle A. How many angle A's are there in that equation? Two. Two angle A's. How many angle B's? Two. Angle B plus angle B. You have two of them. It still adds up to 360. Okay, what did I do in that step? Uh, I really just combined like terms. Think of it as like x plus x is 2x and y plus y is 2y. Same idea. I like terms. Anybody see something I could do with that equation? 2 times angle A plus 2 times angle B equals 360. You can do something to simplify that whole thing now. A plus B equals yeah. Angle A plus angle B equals 180. Look at that. We just showed the two angles are supplementary. That's something we talked about to use to prove it's a parallelogram. Okay. The reason here, we basically divided everything by 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. That's called the division property of equality. Okay, any question on how we got those two angles equal to 180? You got that? All right, so now it's basically a matter of how, how formal do we want to be in this proof. Okay, we've proved that two of the angles are supplementary. Well, technically, what did the theorem say? said you have to prove that an angle is supplementary to both of the angles next to it, not just one of them. Okay, you'd have to prove it's similar to both. So we have shown that A is supplementary to B. Well, now you either need to show that A is also supplementary to D. That's the other one next to it. Or you could show B is supplementary to C. Do it either way. Anybody have a thought how we could how we could do that? It's very similar to what we just did, but just maybe making some different substitutions instead of the ones we did. Technically, you already proved it. Is there is there any way that I could instead instead of ending up with an equation that have all a's and b's somehow? Get me an equation that has all B's and C's. You substituted 
at the beginning you substituted A for C, so we can do C for A. This is the same thing. Now we can just change what we're going to substitute for. Okay. So let's take statement one. And let's see if I can somehow end up with, let's show B and C are supplementary. Okay. So anything that's not a B or a C, we want to get rid of. So we're going to want to get rid of that. And we're going to want to get rid of that. Okay. What can I change angle A to? C. C. What can I change angle, a, angle D to? B. B. Then I'm going to have all Bs and Cs. And we can do exactly the same thing we just did. All right. So instead of, instead of writing that all out again, I'd have angle C plus angle B plus angle C plus angle B. I'd have two angle Bs and two angle Cs, just like this step. And they would add up to 360. And then I could divide everything through um, by two. And it would say angle B plus angle C equals 180. So it would be a complete repeat of those three steps again. All right, so I'm just going to say that in step, in step six. I don't want to spend forever on this one proof. So angle B plus angle C equals 180. And for the reason, I'm going to say it's similar reasoning to steps three through five. Just making a different substitution. In a formal proof, um, somebody probably wouldn't accept that. Depends, depends who's looking at it. Um, but I tried to just explain verbally to you how it's the same. All right, now we've got A and B supplementary. We've got B and C supplementary. We're good. We proved that angle B is supplementary to both of the angles next to it. Okay, so that, was, that one was kind of tough. So, A, B, C, D is a parallel angle. Did we prove it by the definition? Did I prove sides parallel? No, I proved it using a theorem we talked about yesterday. Or actually, um, yeah, from earlier. So, okay, so let's see. Reason seven. Um, we have, let's say, an angle supplementary to both consecutive. Now, you might say, oh, wait a minute, did we prove that? Well, no, we didn't prove that one yet. Okay, we didn't prove, what was it, theorem 6.8. But eventually, we can't prove every single theorem we're going we're gonna to work with. Okay? So if you wanted to do this problem a different way, we could do it a different way. Right? But I'm basing it on another theorem, which we could prove. But in this case, we hadn't proved yet. Okay, because we're running out of time to prove every theorem in this lesson. We can't, can't do it. All right. Any question on that, that idea? Okay. If you didn't like the reason for seven, you know what else you could, I just thought of? Think about when you have two lines cut by a transversal, if the consecutive interior angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. If x plus y adds up to 180, then that proves these two lines are parallel. So we could actually do it that way, too. Okay, we've already done all the work to show that this plus this adds up to 180, <coughs> which proves those are parallel. That's the consecutive interior angles converse. So that, that actually would be an even better way. And we've also proven this and that add up to 180 which proves those lines are parallel. Consecutive interior angles converse again. Okay, so if you look in your book, I think that's, that's probably how they did it. Okay, but the reasoning we have here, this is, this is good. Um, I'm 
going to hold off on theorem 6.10 proving it. Okay, I might leave that one for the homework. This one you could probably think about using the diagonal and triangles again. Okay, you are, you're being given parallel lines. So if you've got two parallel lines cut by a transversal, you could talk about alternate interior angles being the same. A reflexive property. Side angle side, those two triangles are congruent. Once you can prove the triangles are congruent, it's very easy to show you have a parallelogram. Okay. We, just, we just did that in the first proof. Okay. So that's a kind of a quick overview of how I do that one. Make a diagonal, mark the alternate interior angles, and um, then you've got congruent triangles. Okay, so let's, let's skip over that one. Okay, on uh, the bottom of 340, if you forget how to prove a parallelogram, how to prove something's a parallelogram, all the reasons are right there. Okay, they give you a nice, nice chart, everything that you would possibly want to know and how to do it. Okay, so I won't rewrite it because we already got it, but if you need it, just look at page 340. Alright, so let's let's look at this one. So this one is about a parallelogram drawn in a plane. Okay, I, I like these kind of proofs better because now you can work with numbers a lot easier. Okay, you can work with distances and slopes and coordinates, and you're not going to have to think as much about how do I set up the proof. There's only really two or three things you can do. Find the length of segments. Or actually, even find the lengths or find the slopes. That's it. How would slope help me to prove something's a parallelogram? Why, why would slope have anything to do with, with that? Yeah? Yeah. Why don't we just quickly show that the lines are parallel? Okay. Let's look at the slope of BC. Since it's already graphed for us, we can just count, rise, and run. Okay. Let's write down slope. What's the slope of BC? What's my rise? And then what's my run? Oh, here? Yeah, we got two over. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So there's the slope of BC. Okay, let's find the slope of AD. See if it comes out the same. What's the slope of AD? Yeah. Yeah, up two over five. So what does that mean about BC and AD? They have the same slope. So they're, they're parallel. Yeah. So now BC is parallel to AD. Let's do it um, one more time for the other pair. Let's find the slope of um, BA. So my rise in this case is negative, one, two, three, four. So down four, right one. Let's find the slope of CD. Okay, that one is down four, right one. Same slope. What does that mean about BA and CD? The parallel. That proves that we have a parallelogram by the definition. You've proven the opposite sides parallel. That's probably the easiest proof we'll have all, all day. Okay, what else could you have done if you didn't want to show that all those sides were parallel? Angles would be kind of hard to work with here, but what's one other thing you could have done? Yeah, what could you do with the distance formula? They have the same distance. Yeah. You could show that, well, two things. Either show that BC and AD are the same length, and BA and CD are the same length. That doesn't prove that we have parallel lines up. It does. They're the same length it doesn't, because there could, be, there could be one that's, that's the same a, length. That's a theorem. Still, 
That's a theorem. If opposite sides are congruent, by definition, you have a parallelogram. If both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then the shape is a parallelogram. So that's theorem 6-6. Six, six. The only reason I probably wouldn't do the distance formula, I think it takes longer. I don't know. I think it takes longer. And the other way you could do it, if you didn't want to use, or say you wanted to do a combination of slope and distance formula, show those sides are congruent and show they're parallel. That was the last theorem on that page. Could do it that way too. Um, again, I, I think the distance formula takes longer. So I, I would stick with slopes. Okay, but that's, that's up to you. Okay, any question on that? So that's a, that's a coordinate proof. Okay, and the last ones, uh, they're just gonna be like a yes or no. Okay, is that shape a parallelogram? Based on what I marked. Yeah. Yeah. How come? <laughs> What's bisected here? The diagonals. Yeah. If the diagonals cut each other in half, then you have a parallelogram. Okay. How about how about this one? Is that a is that a parallelogram? How come? If it was X, we have X, the consecutive or the angle, I don't know what are those called. The ones next to it, those are consecutive. Yeah, supplementary. Exactly. The consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay? That's enough to prove that it's a parallelogram. Okay? Any any question on that one? All right. Okay, so for tonight, uh, on 342, okay, try 9 through 19, all, 21, 23, and 27. And whatever we have left on the MCAS, I think it's maybe three multiple choice in the open response, um, finish up the MCAS for tomorrow.